Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to approximate the KL divergence. I will first give an intuition and motivation for this, and then we will implement it in TensorFlow probabilities, and I will show you two ways to do so. So we're talking about the KL divergence. This means we're talking about a measure of the distance between two distributions or how far they are apart. And we defined this as DKL of P and Q as the expectation of an X distributed according to P of X over the logarithm of P of X divided by Q of X. And recall, depending on whether X is discrete or continuous, we either have to take the summation or the integral in order to evaluate the expectation. And this is the big problem of the KL divergence. It's hard to evaluate. And by this I mean it is hard to evaluate analytically. So if you were to plug in the definitions of the two distributions that you want to perform the expectation over and then do the summation and integration, this can be really tedious. And sometimes it is even impossible. Just because there we have some intractable integrals or whatever. And the remedy for this is the law of large numbers. So remedy law of large numbers. And the law of large numbers tells us that we can approximate the expectation by sampling from the x distribution a couple of times, evaluating our function at these points and then take the mean. So by this we have dkl of P and Q is approximately 1 over L, summation from L to big L minus 1, of the inner term logarithm of P of big X is XL, divided by Q of big X is small XL, so at the given sample, with XL being distributed according to P of x. And if we do so, then we get close to the DKL divergence, and usually it only takes us, let's say, 100 or 1000 samples to be in a sufficient range of precision for the KL divergence that we want to achieve. Okay, now I am in a terminal and I open up an interactive Python session. First, I will import a package in order to suppress TensorFlow warnings. Then we need TensorFlow itself. And we need TensorFlow probability. Okay, and for the simplicity, we will look at the KL divergence of two Bernoulli distributions. So of two people arguing about a certain percentage of when good weather appears. And we call this weather A which is tfp.distributions.bernoulli with a probability of 0 0.8 and whether b is tfp.distributions.bernoulli with a probability of 0 0.7. And we know we can calculate the exact KL divergence in this case since we have something for two Bernoulli distributions with whether a and whether b and our reference value is 0 0.0257. Keep this in mind. If you want to check what kind of distributions are available for an exact calculation, you can look at the documentation of the scale divergence. And if you here scroll, scroll down to the point built-in KL registrations, and you see, for example, you can do a Bernoulli with a Bernoulli, you can do a beta with a beta, you can do so on and so forth, and this is all listed here. And if you have a combination that does not work, of course, it has to be discrete with discrete and continuous with continuous, then you might find it helpful to use the approximation, or just for curiosity. Okay, recall that we defined our approximation by the law of large numbers, so as the approximation to our, um, to our expectation. So we have to create a sample set. And for this, we have to sample from the P distribution, which is our weather A. And we, let's say, we sample it 100 times. And then, in order to um, evaluate our, um, our, our 
scale divergence, we have to first take the logarithm, so we do tf.math.logarithm of the quotient of the probability of the p distribution of the sample set divided by the q distribution of the sample set. So it's Weber A dot probability of the sample set divided by Weber B probability of the sample set. And then all we see, well, what we get is some sort of an, yeah, an array of numbers and we have to reduce this and we have to reduce it to the mean and let's do this and if we do this then we get the following value so here we have a negative value it's just because we don't have enough samples yet let us take a little more samples and do it again and here we see we are getting closer to our actual value and if we sample again and check it again we see we are somewhat like iterating around but we're already getting quite close to it however this kind of um, pr procedure might be a little bit tedious so you have to remember the formulation of the KL divergence in order to um, evaluate this but before we go on to the next, I want to um, show you how to maybe do this a little more efficiently. And since we are taking the logarithm of two probabilities or the quotient of two probabilities, we can also take the log probabilities of the sample sets and uh, subtract them from each other. So again, we need tf dot reduce mean. But this time we do it of whether a dot log probability of the sample set minus whether b dot log probability of the sample set. And here we see, well, we're getting the same value and we also be, we are also a little more numerically accurate, but essentially this is probably the best way to do this, especially if you're getting into big sample sets where you have, where you have to go to log probabilities anyways. Okay, now to the second way, which I find a little more helpful because you don't have to remember the format, and where we use where we will use a function from the variational inference module. So we do tfp.vi and the function is called Monte Carlo variational loss. Okay, this seems a little scary, but trust me. And in here we have to provide two arguments. So we have to provide first an uh, an A and a B distribution. But in this case, the order is different. Recall the KL divergence is not symmetric, so we have to check the order and we want to do the KL of A and B. But here we have to do it the other way around. So we have to plug in the B and we not just have to plug in the function, but we have to plug in with its method for the log probability. And then as a second entry, we use whoever A. And then we have the option to choose the number of samples and if we do 100 samples for instance then we get a value that is really far off and we can repeat it and then we will be entirely different value i mean we're not that far apart but still it's not correct and let's go to 10,000 samples and we see yes our value is somewhere in the range of the 0 0.025 and if we do even more samples then we are getting quite precise on this particular value. And this is how you would do the KL divergence approximately.